Welcome to this series of videos on accessibility requirements for public procurement of ICT products and services in Europe, the EN301549 standard. This is the second part of video 9. It's sponsored by Microsoft and produced by Funka. My name is Susanna Lorin. I'm an accessibility expert with a long experience in standardization. This video covers the second part of chapter 9 in the EN standard. If you haven't watched the first part of video 9, you should do that first. 9.2.15, Keyboard, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.1.1, Keyboard. The user should be able to interact with the interface in his or her preferred way. Some users cannot use a mouse and therefore use different kinds of assistive technology to interact with the interface. Other users need to use a keyboard, virtual or physical. This can, for example, be users with motor impairments, blind users or users that provide input with a voice. This success criterion is aimed to make sure that it's possible to use the keyboard to navigate. This is not only relevant for computers, but also for mobile phones, TVs, gaming platforms and other devices where the user can connect a keyboard. If you want to test this, you should be able to move between the interfaces, links and form objects by hitting the tab key on the keyboard and then selecting by hitting the enter key or spacebar. Use the enter key to activate a link, the spacebar to select a checkbox, to switch between radio buttons or select an alternative in a drop-down list. You use the arrow keys. 9.2.16 No Keyboard Trap is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.1.2, No Keyboard Trap. It is important that the user does not get stuck on an object on the website when navigating with a keyboard. Such a trap occurs if a user can navigate to an object but cannot move further down the page. A common problem is that external applications like a video player might loop the tab order so that the user can tab down to the video player and into it but never gets below the video player on the page. If the user needs to use a special command or mode to get past this object, you need to clearly inform the user. And remember, this information needs to be displayed for all users navigating with a keyboard, not only screen reader users. If this success criterion is not met, it can hinder users from accessing large parts of the website. 9.2.17 Timing Adjustable is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.2.1, Timing Adjustable. Sometimes there is a need to use time limits. For example, on a banking website, users need to get logged out for safety reasons. A ticket machine might need to unblock seats if the user walks away without completing the purchase. Time limits are a problem for users that need more time than is allowed. Therefore, it is essential that the user can do something about the time limit. If there is a time limit, the user must be able to either turn it off to adjust the time span or extend it before the limit is reached. If the user can adjust the time, the possible range has to be wide, at least 10 times the length. If the user can extend the time, the user first needs to be warned about the upcoming limit and then given at least 20 seconds to extend the limit with a simple action like pressing a button. The extension must be allowed to perform at least 10 times. There are a few exceptions to this criterion. For example, if the time limit is longer than 20 hours or if it's part of a real-time event like an auction where the time limit is inevitable or if the limitation is essential to an action, so that extending the time limit would make the action invalid. 9.2.18 Pause, Stop, Hide is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.2.2, Pause, Stop, Hide. Moving, scrolling and blinking objects can be very stressful and distracting for some users. If a part of the interface is moving or changing by itself, it can become difficult to keep focus on other parts. If the user has severe concentration problems, it might mean that the whole website becomes inaccessible. Therefore, you should avoid using moving, shifting, scrolling and blinking content if it does not add something important to the user. If you do have this kind of content, it starts automatically and continues for more than 5 seconds 
you need to provide the user with an easy way to pause, stop or hide it. This also applies to auto-updating information. But for auto-updating information like stock prices, you could instead provide the user with a way to alter the frequency of updates. If the movement, blinking, scrolling or auto-updating is part of an activity that is essential to the content, you do not need to provide the user with a way to pause or stop it. One example of an essential movement could be an animation that shows the user that something loads or is in progress. And if not showing this would make the user think that the content has frozen. In this case, the user should not be able to interact with the interface during the movement. 9.2.19, three flashes or below threshold, is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 2.3.1, three flashes or below threshold. It is important that the content does not risk causing seizures. Therefore, web pages should not contain anything that flashes more than three times in a one second time period. This might not be very common on web pages, but it can occur in videos. So please ensure that both the website itself and the videos that you show on the website meet this requirement. If the content only flashes three times and then stops, the success criterion is passed. It is also passed if the flashing does not contain more than three red flashes in any time period of one second, or if the area that flashes is very small. There are detailed measurements in the standard. 9.2.20, Bypass Blocks, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.1, Bypass Blocks. When navigating with a keyboard, it becomes very time-consuming to be forced to go through blocks of content that are repeated on several pages. Therefore, whenever you have blocks of content that are repeated on multiple web pages, you need to provide the user with a mechanism to bypass the block. The most common example is to provide the user with a link to bypass the menu and go directly to the main content. Some commonly used web apps, such as word processors, have keyboard commands to jump over the toolbar and get right into the editing area. This mechanism needs to be possible to see and understand for all users, not only for screen reader users. If the mechanism used is a link to bypass a block of content, the link should become visible if the user tabs to it. Also see 9.2.26, Focus Visible, for more on this. 9.2.21, Page Titled, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.2, Page Titled. To pass this criterion, the web pages must have titles that describe the content or purpose. For example, the main heading of the page followed by the website name. In HTML, you do this by using the element title. The title element helps the user to identify their location and also to keep track on what web pages are active in the browser, since the titles can be found on the tabs in the browser window. The title is often used also by search engines when displaying the search results. 9.2.22, Focus Order, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.3, Focus Order. When navigating from one object to another on a web page, the order has to be logical and make sense to the user, even if navigation is made with a keyboard. The order does not have to be the same order as objects occur in the code, but it has to reflect the logical meaning of the content. Keep in mind that the focus order affects both sighted keyboard users and blind users, so the focus order must make sense to both of these groups. 9.2.23 Link Purpose in Context is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.4, Link Purpose in Context. This criterion states that a user should be able to understand where a link leads to, either from the link text alone or from the link text and the context of the link. If the link, for example, is situated beneath a heading, the link text and heading together should be understandable. Aim to describe the link purpose in the link text alone, so that the surrounding content is not needed to understand where the link will lead. This will make it easier for screen reader users that jump from link to link without getting the context, and it will make it easier for search engines to understand what types of information different pages contain. If that is not possible, then the link should at least be understandable in its context. 9.2.24, Multiple Ways, is based on WCAG 
Success criterion 2.4.5, multiple ways. Users prefer to locate content on websites in different ways, and the intent of this criterion is to make it possible for users to do so, even on small websites. If a web page is part of a set of pages, which they usually are, there must be more than one way to find that web page. Note that this does not apply if a web page is part of a process, like a step-by-step -step activity. Examples of different ways to locate web pages are by navigating in a menu, by using a sitemap, or by using a search function. 9.2.25, Headings and Labels, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.6, Headings and Labels. Headings and labels are important to users. Headings help the users understand the content of pages and sections. Each page and each separate part of a page should have a heading that clearly identifies the purpose of the page or section. Headings should also be consistent between different pages. So if one page is part of a set of web pages related to each other, for example, steps in a guide, the headings could read Guide on Accessibility Step 1 – User Needs and Guide on Accessibility Step 2 – Technology. Labels help users understand what input to provide. Every item that requires user input, like form fields, must have a label that helps the user understand what data to enter where. Try to use short and descriptive headings and labels. 9.2.26 Focus Visible is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 2.4.7, Focus Visible. Ensure that users who navigate with a keyboard can distinguish which element that has focus when they navigate through a web page. Each link, button, form control or other item that can receive focus with keyboard navigation should be clearly highlighted. This can be done in different ways. Two common examples would be to display a frame or to invert colors on the object that receives focus. 9.2.27 Language of Page is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.1.1 Language of Page. The default language of a web page should be defined in the code. If more than one language is used, the one that is most in use should be defined. This way, Assistive technology and user agents can present the text correctly and convert it into synthetic speech with the relevant pronunciation. In HTML5, the main language is declared with the lang attribute on the HTML element. 9.2.28, language of parts, is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 3.1.2, language of parts. When web pages contain text in more than one language, the parts of the page that is written in another language than the main language of the page have to be defined as well. This is done by using the lang attribute on an element that encapsulates the part of the text that is written in another language. You do not have to do this if the text consists of proper names, technical terms or words of indeterminable language. Also, words or phrases that have become part of the default language is an exception. 9.2.29 on focus is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 3.2.1 on focus. The functionality of a website should be predictable, and focus as such must not trigger events. For example, when the user taps on the next link or button, or when the user clicks in a text field or hovers over a link that has a mouse over script, forms should not be submitted automatically. New windows should not be opened, and the user should not be moved to another part of the page. 9.2.30 on input is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 3.2.2 on input. This criterion is related to the previous one, but addresses input components. So entering text in a text field or checking a checkbox should not automatically trigger an event. One example is if a form is automatically posted as soon as the user clicks in the checkbox I agree with the terms and conditions, this would be a fail. Remember to give the user information on what will happen before it happens. 9.2.31 Consistent Navigation is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.2.3 Consistent Navigation. 
To present the navigation of a website in a consistent manner is important for many user groups. The navigation mechanisms must be presented in the same way through all pages where they are repeated. For example, the search field should be found in the same place on all pages. Users who see well often rely on the visual cues when navigating. Low vision users sometimes need the consistency even more, since the use of magnification means that only a small part of the screen is visible at any given time. Make sure that the content is presented in the same way throughout the website. This way, menu items are in the same order in different pages and use consistent terminology. This is important for all users, but especially for users with cognitive disabilities. 9.2.32, Consistent Identification, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.2.4, Consistent Identification. Users must be able to recognize functional components in different web pages. This means, for example, that a button should not be labeled Search on one page and Find on another. This success criterion is important for several user groups, for example, users with cognitive disabilities. Also, screen reader users often rely on component identification to orient themselves between web pages. The criterion also relates to text descriptions of non-text content. So if the same icon is used on several pages, one example could be a print icon, the text alternatives must be consistent on the different pages. 9.2.33 Error identification is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.3.1, Error Identification. This success criterion aims to ensure that users are aware that an error has occurred and can understand what went wrong when entering data. This can be done in different ways. It is quite common with live validation, which means that error messages are displayed as soon as the user leaves a form field without providing correct data but it can also be validated when the user presses the Submit button. The important thing is to clearly show the user that something went wrong and where. This needs to be done both visually for sighted users and in the code so that assistive technology can receive the information. The error message should be as specific as possible and aim to describe the type and location of the error. The best way to inform the user is to have a general message listing all errors at the top of the form as well as a description of each error in the relevant location in the form. If there is a general message, the focus for screen reader users can be directed to that message. 9.2.34, Labels or Instructions, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.3.2, Labels or Instructions. When users can enter data, they need to know what data and format is expected. So input elements, such as a text field, must be combined with a label or instruction. Provide labels that help users complete the task and prevent errors. Be precise and do not clutter the page with unnecessary information. Group the label and input field together visually to help users understand what label is relevant to what form field. That decreases the risk of misinterpreting connections of labels and input elements but it also makes it easier for users with screen magnification. 9.2.35, Error Suggestion, is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.3.3, Error Suggestion. Even if users get information about an error, users with cognitive limitations, for example, may find it difficult to understand how to correct the error. This can lead to users abandoning the form submission. So, if suggestions on how to correct errors are known, they should be communicated to the user. This can be integrated in the error message. One example could be if the user has entered an email address without an at sign. In this case, the error message should not only state that the email address is wrong, but rather inform the user that the email address lacks an at sign. 9.2.36 Error Prevention – Legal Financial Data is based on WCAG 2.0, Success Criterion 3.3.4, Error Prevention, Legal Financial Data. The goal with this requirement is to help users avoid committing to legal or financial arrangement by accident and to prevent users from deleting personal data by mistake. By providing a confirmation step before committing to legal or financial arrangement and before deleting or altering user data, the user gets a second chance. 
If this is not possible, it should at least be possible to undo the action. 9.2.37 parsing is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 4.1.1, parsing. All code that you use should be correct. This decreases the risk for problems when user agents and assistive technology is trying to interpret the code. If you need to make exceptions, it is important that the code at least follows these four rules. It should have complete start and end tags. It should be nested according to the specifications. It should not contain duplicate attributes. And any ID values should be unique. 9.2.38, name, role, value, is based on WCAG 2.0, success criterion 4.1.2 name, role, value. This is one of the most complex success criteria in WCAG. It states that all interactive components, state, role and value, should be programmatically determined. This means that it should be possible from the code to determine the role, value and name of all interactive components like links, form objects and buttons. Let's have a look at an example. If you have a button that expands an area, like a menu button that expands a menu when the user presses the button, that menu button needs something in the code stating that it is a button, it has a name, it controls the menu area, and it has to say if the menu is expanded or collapsed. By doing this in the code, User agents and assistive technology are able to understand the purpose and give users the information they need to interact with the interface. This is just one example. There are many different situations where this is relevant. The point is that there must be something in the code that gives the user all relevant information to understand what is shown and what they can do to interact with the interface. The requirements in subsection 9.2 are directly applicable to the content. But there are also some general requirements that web pages need to meet in order to be labeled as conformant with WCAG 2.0. These are found in 9.3, WCAG 2.0 conformance requirements. There are five such requirements. Conformance level, full pages, complete processes, only accessibility supported ways of using technologies, and non-interference. Since WCAG is technology independent and developed to be future-proof, the guidelines are not so straightforward that you only need to read them to understand how to meet them. How you should implement your interface to actually meet the requirements vary, depending on what technology you use, the capability of user agents and assistive technology in the country or region where the system is to be used, and on the user's ability to understand the information provided by you the user agent and the assistive technology. It is not enough that the solution is possible to use in theory if users cannot cope with it. Therefore, you need to understand the context in which the interface is to be used. You need to understand the support in assistive technology and user agents for the technology you have selected. And you need to understand the users. Remember, web interfaces are really important to users, as most of us use them every day. To make web interfaces that work for everyone, you will probably need to include more requirements than the success criteria in WCAG, but this is a good start. By including user testing in the development process, you have a chance to find issues that are difficult for the users, no matter if they are covered in WCAG or not. So if you start with the users, these requirements can be the first step on the way of making that splendid product that you are opting for. If you would like to know more, please have a look at our other videos. There is one video for each chapter in the standard. Thanks for watching.